Let's return to our top story now, the Libyan government's return to Tripoli. Mohammed El Jar is a Libyan political analyst. He's with the Atlantic Council's Hariri Center for Middle East, and he's joining us now from The Hague in the Netherlands. Very good to have you with us on Al Jazeera. So the unity government is now in Tripoli. There are two other governments in Libya right now, though. So what happens next? Uh, yes, for now we have three governments that are, uh, all of them are um, operating out of Libya or somewhere out of Libya. Uh, what happens next is, or what was supposed to happen next is that uh, both of the other governments will hand to this internationally recognized government, hand over power uh, peacefully. Uh, but that does not look like an option uh, at the moment. And as a result, what we will end up with is instead of having two competing governments, we will have three uh, competing governments in Libya. Why? Because um, the government or the self-proclaimed Islamist government in Tripoli is refusing to hand over power and is going as far as actually um, uh, threatening war and uh, resistance against this uh, uh, UN-backed government. And in eastern Libya, the, the other caretaker government has, uh, Prime Minister has refused to hand over power because he says that this UN-backed government was not endorsed by the parliament in, in the city of Tobruk in eastern Libya. And as a result, he would not hand over until it gets that endorsement uh, from the internationally recognized parliament. So um, uh, this government was supposed to bring unity and it was supposed to be a government of national accord, but it seems that it has only uh, complicated the matters further in Libya. Is it significant, though, that the unity government does have the support of the most powerful uh, militia, you know, the, the militias in Misrata? It definitely has uh, significant and huge support in the uh, city of Misrata. It does have the support of key and powerful uh, militias there. However, there are some uh, groups uh, within Misrata or some armed groups within Misrata uh, that are opposed to the government. And it is actually um, the, the, the force that is currently uh, mobilizing in, in Tripoli or tried to mobilize in Tripoli against uh, this government of mm -hmm. national accord is led by none other than uh, Salah Badi, who is an ex-congressman for the city of Misrata. And there is also another uh, 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 Islamist uh, linked uh, Misrata and militia called Al Marsa, which is again very powerful and it is opposed to the uh, government. But not just that, this government of national accord has a problem uh, or has the challenge of losing the east, eastern Libya, the entire eastern region of Libya militarily. Why? Because the, um, uh, the, 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 the presidential council of this government uh, is boycotted by two members who are supportive of. Uh, uh, the Libyan National Army and General Khalifa Haftar. So as a result, yeah. um, this government might have only the support of uh, the powerful city of Misrata or the majority of the powerful city of Misrata, but it will also lose the support of some key uh, players on the ground, both political and military. An incredibly complicated uh, situation in Libya itself, given that just how important is the support of the international community in returning Libya to some kind of uh, stability? You know, how much support is this unity government receiving from Western governments, from the United Nations? Could that make a difference, especially, you know, given the growth of the Islamic State in Libya, given the, the migrant, the refugee crisis, uh, people moving from Libya to Europe? Um, um, I guess um, this, uh, the, the, the only powerful weapon, if you like, that this government has is the international recognition and the fact that it will have control over Libya's central bank and foreign uh, uh, investment and also uh, foreign assets. Uh, the role of the international community will be key and the commitment of the international community to supporting this government and delivering of their promises of support for this government will be uh, key for the success of this government. However, the question is how much uh, can the international community do or how much can Western countries that have pledged support uh, to this government do? Um, uh, the, 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 there is no clear answer to what kind of support they can give. They're all, um, uh, all countries are making it conditional to a request from uh, this GNA. The dilemma, however, is that if this GNA requests or the government of national accord requests international or Western help, uh, it, it could harm its, its own very weak legitimacy in the eyes of the people and it could give a chance 
to its own um, opponents. Actually, the Grand Mufti Sadiq al Ghariani, who is opposed to this government, has already accused it of coming uh, on board uh, an Italian frigate. Um, and uh, it, it seems that any international element here could, uh, I mean, we have to treat carefully, it could be used um, in a negative light and, and a web as a weapon or a propaganda against the government itself. Libyan political analyst Mohammed El Jar joining us from The Hague in the Netherlands there. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you.